Hello, my soccer universe. Circle power struck again. If you don't know what I mean, look at the crests. The entire knocker stage. Whichever crest is more circular won the tie. And this time we are not quite winning there yet, but it's firmly leaning towards the more circular ones with Chelsea, of course, having circular crest and Real Madrid will almost have it, but have a crown on top. And then PSG and Manchester City, yeah, both are circular crests, uh, but Man City just has more circles on their crest. I think I count four versus PSG's uh, three. So yeah, um, we are looking at an English final. It is definitely looming. Um, and yeah, it's had me a little bit unexcited in the sense that I think for a European final, I always love to see uh, teams from two different nations go against each other. Yes, we had a lot of Spanish finals and now the English could have a third uh, all-English final as well after uh, United, Chelsea and um, Liverpool against Spurs. So we, it looks at the moment as we will see a City-Chelsea final, which I have to say is not a uh, is it not a bad final? I mean, uh, that it has very intriguing subplots in there as well, bar none. Uh, I think this would have that one that I would watch. However, I'm afraid that um, Chelsea would take the joy out, out, out of it. And I'm saying that uh, as someone who actually used to have Chelsea as their favorite team in England. So, uh, but at the moment, um, when Chelsea wants to keep it tight, and I think if they would play against City, they would keep it tight. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, first of all, Jersey's back there. I have, of the four teams in the semifinals, I have a, a total of 12 jerseys with PSG 4 and uh, City only 2. Yeah, <laughs> should be probably the way it's going, maybe the other way, or should it also be out. And now with City uh, having one side to wear City and um, have 11 jerseys up there, which means one spot is empty. Yeah, it's the one behind me. But I say I'm hiding that any, a, anyway. And so, yeah, but I want to be fully transparent. As I said, the two semifinals, I have to say, um, both English teams definitely deserved uh, their slight advantage. I actually think a Chelsea should have won. Um, and yeah, the game PSG against Man City was definitely a better game. There was more uh, not, uh, more to see in many ways. Um, but it was also a game of two halves, very much so. Um, I would say we'll start in Madrid. Uh, last Champions League game, hopefully in Valde Bebas. I don't want to see that crowd again. There, it has some charms, maybe for, for the group stage, but it's time we see the Bernabeu again. Uh, it's just ridiculous, this training ground, and especially I say, and I keep saying it, put the friggin' camera on the other side of the field. There you have at least half a stand. I don't even mind that there's nothing behind the goals and you see a little bit of the um, uh, surroundings. That actually is something I do enjoy. But this one stand that we look at there, this white wall, uh, no. Give me at least a little bit of a stay stand field. Turn it around. Turn it around. I'm, I'm arguing for that one for quite, quite a while. I would say the uh, first 25 minutes all belonged to Chelsea. Chelsea was that much better than Real Completely outplayed them. Um, and the finishing let them down. They had the finishing of one guy, Timo Werner. And I have to say, this does not come as a surprise to me. I... Goal scoring is not his forte. It has not been in Germany as well. Uh, especially when I watch him for the national team. He is a great player. He gets into space. He creates spaces. He uh, a lot of speed, but he's not a finisher. At Leipzig, I think he scored only against lower league, uh, lower level teams. He never scored the really important goals. I, I never saw him as a big goal scorer. But he's a player that you need to get uh, into, um, you know, have the speed pull the defense the defenses apart and maybe then have him uh, uh, create some, some, some something and maybe he, he can make a tap in. But the big miss that he had there uh, where he just shoots straight at Courtois with a, just a little bit more com com composure. But you know, he is young. Uh, just guided into one of the corners and it's dead. I do have to say though that I really liked uh, the way the goal for Chelsea was played with Rüdiger standing more or less midfield, 
waiting, 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 and he's seeing the run of Pulisic, uh, puts it over uh, the entire Real Madrid uh, defense, who then have a complete brain fart. Everyone is trying to defend the goal and going away from the ball. There was a complete mis miscommunication. Someone needs to go with Pulisic, who suddenly... Um, acres of space around him he can compose i mean although his run is going away from goal he has enough time to compose himself go past kurko kotoa then he has only two defenders there stand, standing and need to put in the net i'm honest the thing if there's a sergio ramos playing this goal does not happen uh it it, it just does not happen this, this way and uh, easily said as long as there was no rain chelsea was completely dominating that uh that game um, also has to be said that uh, Karim Benzema had one uh, really thundering shot that hit the crossbar and then from, oh yeah, what was it, the upright, it was going there in that, uh, in, into, the, in, into the corner, but it was more out than in, and then from a corner kick, uh, Real Madrid gets a completely undeserved equalizer. But what a goal it was, I mean, uh, the, the corner counter comes in. Um, uh, Casemiro tips it down, then Eda Militao the same thing. Bozema can chest it down and just volleys it home. Uh, that was one sweet strike. Uh, really nice goal. The more of you you see, it, 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 it's a moral. It's absolutely a moral. And yeah, with that 1-1, one, one, that was basically all that was coming in that game because uh, Kind of from that moment on, the Evans said, yeah, 1-1 one, one doesn't look too bad. And the game really in the second half completely fell uh, asleep or whatever I have, I, I, I have to say. In the first half, I actually really thought that this game will be boring uh, as can be, given how the two teams have, have been playing. Uh, so I actually decided to do some work in the first half, but it was still exciting. And I, I actually uh, hit hit myself for that because yeah maybe i should have really fully concentrated on that, that one then when i really wanted to concentrate on the game the game was a snooze fest and yeah it ends one one and i would say definitely advantage chelsea from what i, I could see uh individual classes maybe more with real madrid however as a team chelsea has just way too many options and they are defensively so sound yes you need to probably take care of Benzema. But other, other than that, I see definitely Chelsea in the um, as the favorite at this moment. Although a one-one draw, uh, I always thought uh, up until recently a one-one draw away from home is probably a pretty perfect result. However, um, you know, more as more goals get scored, a one-one is maybe not as safe as one would wish for. The other game, um. Definitely a much better game and I think for one half it went definitely the way I wanted to go. Yes, I don't hide, hide, hide behind it. I wanted PSG to, win, uh, to go to the final and win it. Uh, I have been supporting PSG for a long time and I have to say my second favorite in there is definitely Chelsea and I think a PSG Chelsea final just for the storyline with Tuchel would be well worth it. Um, I also have to say go, going in it was so intriguing because both teams, the uh, the strength of one play into the weaknesses of the, of the other, and then you have the star power up front with PSG with probably one of the best front lines that I've seen. And um, while I admire Mbappe, and I really can appreciate what Neymar is doing, although as a person I'm not so fond of him. Uh, it is Di Maria who really uh, excites me the most of them and who gets the least headlines. But what Di Maria is doing is just, uh, when he's on, he's tactically br uh, brilliant. He can take everyone on. Uh, his crosses are world class. He is the player that excites me personally the most in there. It was also good news that Verratti for PSG was big. But uh, coming back to that, I mean, we had um, the three stars up front for PSG who basically take all the uh, limelight. However, Manchester City as a team is so well crafted and so exciting and so non-traditional in many ways with the false line. I mean, there was no Aguero, there was no uh, Gabriel Jesus. Uh, it, it was all on the midfield players. And uh, if you read Michael uh, Cox's book, uh, zonal marking. Uh, I had to just look, look up. Great book to read. Uh, he 
basically says that Bar that um, Guardiola, not Barcelona, Guardiola likes to build his teams of eleven Guardiolas. That would be his perfect team to have, uh, all midfielders uh, who can play any, 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 anywhere. I think the star for Man City is definitely De Bruyne, a player that I totally enjoy watching. Uh, there's no doubt, doubt about it. He's one of my favorite uh, players, especially when he's on in the, in, in, in the Premier League. But then I'm thinking, yeah, this shows you how much team Manchester City is because the star of the team is no match for the three up front at PSG. Absolutely. Uh, one hand, hand, 100%. Uh, that, that for me, it was the three star, uh, stars up front that actually gave Man City in the first half a whole lot of trouble. Um, especially then after PSG was in, in, in the lead. I've never seen Man City being pushed so far back. Yes, Man City had actually quite some uh, chances there, especially the one by Foden around the 40th minute where um, he doesn't need to take it uh, full on, just guy, guy, guy with the inside of the foot in, into one of the corners and you uh, most likely will score a goal that Despite, I mean, if you look at highlights of the adversary, we think it was an even game. It was all PSG because Neymar came out to play, Mbappé was out, out, out to play. They get a really nice goal from um, a corner, corner where Marquinhos perfectly attacks the ball for coming from outside, outside the box. The way he heads it in, this is pretty much the perfect um, uh, de um, corner kick. Uh, and they created chance. It was not that they were big chance, chances, but uh, PSG was definitely uh, pushing uh, Man City back, who maybe seemed a little bit too afraid of uh, the attacking prowess that we have with Mbappé and Neymar. And if Neymar is trying to take on players left and right, that's a joy, joy, joy to watch. And even when he once fell down on, on the floor with, with the elbow, he was not rolling around. You could see he was clearly hurt there and you would believe it. So yeah, first half, I was actually quite optimistic because I uh, won the lead and it looked really, really good. But um, as I come to see now very often, the second half and, and, and the entire game is a little bit the embodiment of how the seasons for my two favorite team teams are going. You start out strong and then you just don't have enough energy and it gets more negative, you get uh, blah, 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 and all goes downhill. Second half was all Man City. And I don't know why and how. So from the get-go, you saw that PSG suddenly was standing a whole lot deeper. And Man City was moving f way further upfield. And it was all going to the left goal again. So uh, that is something I did not really under understand. Before I go further, in, I actually got a nice tidbit uh, for the... Um, uh, a commentary. I mean, I, I watched it on the zone where actually Sandro Wagner was the um, color commentator. And um, the com commentator, just I think in the 11 or after the first uh, corner kick for PSG, said that Man City has not uh, conceded a goal this Champions League from a dead ball situation. And Sandro Wagner actually said, Well, you know, that, you, that usually means they will give up one. And two minutes later, exactly that happened. And uh, to top it off, I thought the same thing. Whenever there's such a thing, there's a long streak of something that happened. This means it's going to happen soon. Yeah. And I have to say, uh, I did not hear a lot of him, but it was really nice to hear a, a former player who just took his trainer license. He gave so such good insights into the game. It was actually a joy to listen to. Uh, unless on Sky, where the, you usually have one commentator who is kind of of, of the also you know all this poeticism in in, in it, but not the inside details of, of the game. I really enjoyed watching the game. Yes, yeah, yes, I did. It was very well analyzed, all over all over the place. As I said. Let's go back. PSG is suddenly hanging back, defending almost, and seeing uh, maybe may, may, maybe can, can see that uh, lead home and willingly conceding the ball to Man City, and that allowed Man City to slowly build up. And you know the triangles became even more, 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 more. Then it goes out to Mares, and and uh, PSG had a hard time to cope. They had only one chance where Mbappe took on. Um, the defenders in the box, left, right, left, right, carding in, and then Verratti by just a hair. It does not get to the ball. It was almost like the Bayern Munich game all, all over again. Kind of pulled it into the net. And yeah, I was actually thinking, yeah, PSG, 
<laughs> maybe they can just hang on, although it's a very dangerous game to play. Maybe, maybe they think, yeah, there's not too much attacking prowess there with Man City. And even though we don't have the bad, best defenders, maybe if we put enough numbers behind the ball, it just seemed odd after the first half. Uh, there, but then after a corn, corn kick, the ball is played out. Sinjenko, De Bruyne wants to crawl, cross it in, and no one can clear the ball. And Navas is caught between a raw rock and a hard place because if he commits himself going to the left, if, if a defender like Stones gets towards it, and I think uh, he a little bit um, uh, distracted um, um, Navas there, there as well, because he. If he gets he gets to it, then Navas needs to stay in the position where he is. If he commits going to the left, yeah, you cannot fault him for this goal. Uh, it was the defenders that just need to clear that ball, and it goes in. And then you already saw then how that Man City was keeping the ball more and more and more and more and more and more. And PSG couldn't get to it, and they got frustrated. They lost their head. You 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 can see the nervous energy. So, so suddenly Neymar was throwing hissy fits and. Everything was not going their way. Then they make this stupid foul. It's a free kick and the wall does not hold. Uh, I think it was Kim Pembe and Paredes who just opened a gap and Mares puts it right through. And I, I, I think everyone thought that the Broy is going to take that free kick. Well, and this probably will settle the tie. With a 1-1, I think PSG has a chance. A 2-1 away from home. Eee. I also have, have to say that Idrissa's gaze uh, foul on Gundogan was ugly, fully deserving of the red card. And then uh, when they all were storming to get the Bruyne sent off, I really did I really didn't like it. I it, it was really that uh, the body language, especially of Neymar and Mbappé, then uh, dropped significantly. You could see the frustration and at that moment City knew they had them. And it would have been not unfair, I think, if there would have been a third goal scored because it all went downhill so quickly. And as, as, as I said, it's the same thing as the season, whole season for Milan and Lask is going at, 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 at the moment when the first, when the first half you play pretty brilliantly and then it all goes down. So I know the feeling this was all condensed in it one game, but I have to say Man City uh, deserved winners of that one. And so, yeah, I would say, let's look at the chances uh, that to advance uh, Man City 94% now in my model and 57% of winning the entire Champions League. Uh, that percentage is so high because they have such a clear ad advantage now. I don't think it's beyond PSG to win, but you basically need to win by two goals clear or 3-2, which they have done against Barcelona and Bayern, the two other Guardiola teams. Uh, interestingly enough, but it's a tough task to ask. Chelsea favorites over Real Madrid, but they will not be favored against City, so that's why they only have a 26% chance at the moment winning Real Madrid. Yeah, I can see this maybe going even to penalties in London, although I think Chelsea is overall the better, the composed team and also the fitter team, because Real Madrid is, yeah, let's say, not very um, fit, it seems. We have the uh, return legs, we have uh, next Tuesday, we'll get the return leg Man City against PSG. I still am looking forward to that because I think those two teams are really uh, a joy to watch. Uh, although I think it's a pretty foregone conclusion that Man City will go through there. Um, and then Chelsea, Real Madrid, as I say, I expect a little bit of a dogged game. Um, Real Madrid needs to do something. And I want to see if their midfield can pull out one great performance. But I think overall, when I look at the quality of squad, it should be Chelsea going through. In any case, what do you think about the two semifinals and who will make it to the, to, to the final? Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.